Hi everybody. In addition to that cheap analog line voltage monitor that I bought from American Science and Surplus, I also found this countdown calculator. And if you read the description here, it's just a very bizarre product that seems like it should not exist. It's a calculator and a timer and alarm clock and a USB hub. It's just this weird Frankenstein collection of different functions all in one single electronic piece of crap. And I just couldn't resist, so I bought not only one of them, but two for $5.75 each. It says right here, yours will have a silver or blue body depending on which one is on top of the pile. Well. I guess I got lucky with a couple of blue ones on top of the pile. All right, so this one, I've already played around with it. Um, haven't taken it apart yet. I haven't tried out the USB hub. It's got this, this hardwired USB cable all, all um, tucked away in here. Got another little indent right here for something. Maybe a USB micro or a mini could possibly fit in there, but I really have no idea what the intention for that is. Made in China, of course. The manual is is printed in Chinglish, as we shall see. Let's look at the other one that I haven't opened up yet. Comes in this nice bubble wrap. The manual is in the back, all folded up. It's got this extra, it's got this USB cable. Let me rip this open. USB extension cable, actually, of course, because the one that's hardwired is just a little too short, probably for um, most application. And on the back, there's a little plastic pull tab, and when I pull this, it's going to play a little tune from the little piezoelectric speaker right here, and we'll see it turn on. And there's a display. I think it's a really nice clock display. It's probably the best function that's, that works on this thing. It actually has a four digit year on here. I really like that. And month and date, of course. And then um, 12, you know, the, you know, the hours, minutes, seconds on the clock. Also 24 hour, we can set 24 hour mode on this thing. And, but one really, bizarre um, thing is that it actually defaults to Honolulu time. It's got these 16 different buttons here for the different time zones. And I guess 16 time zones is enough to account for 90% of the world population. But you know, it's not 24 or 25 time zones or for however you want to count time zones because it's really convoluted with all the different time zones that there are and so the way you set the time zone is since i'm in american eastern time zone I just push nyc and set so if it was 12 o'clock a.m in honolulu it's going to be 5 a.m in new york city now, I don't know about daylight savings time. I don't think this thing is actually going to account for daylight savings time in any particular time zone. But we can also set this. It kind of works similar to a run-of-the-mill digital alarm clock where you just move the up and down buttons for each, each section of the, the clock that's blinking. Let's put this up for... 2016 and there it is recording this on january 26th about 10 51 at night already got it in 24 hour mode so that's that's really really nice now let's go into all the really crummy stuff about this okay so first of all when you do the and you want to set the alarm or the timer you know you and you set the uh you know, put it into set mode. Your first intuition is to start pushing buttons down here, but nope, they don't do anything. Put it back into set mode here. 
it'll turn off from set mode after five seconds of inactivity. Um, but there it goes again. Let's try that. So you can only use the up down buttons. Take it out of set mode here. And, and then to get the timer started, you push, just push the timer button and yep, it's counting down. And just push any button to, to make it quiet. Alarm, of course, you can turn the alarm off or on. And right now it's off. There are, there's an option of eight different tunes. One of them, the happy birthday song number five is really horrendous towards the end. There's a one note that's really, really off. As for the calculator, you just push C or AC to put it in the calculator mode, and then it works quite nicely as a calculator, a four, basic four function thing, and with little sales tax uh, percent button on there too. And I find it really distracting that it has all the time zones displayed on the individual buttons here. It seems overkill that each time zone has its own dedicated button. You don't really need that. One thing I have discovered is something very unfortunate and there's no excuse for this is that if I do zero minus nine for example it equals nine. There, Where's the minus sign? There is no minus sign at all. And it's not just this. I did it with the other one too. That's how I know about this already. It's it's completely, uh, it, it's it's just really crap. And the, the minus is still there, mind you. It's the, the calculator does keep track that it is a negative nine because then if we add six, we get a negative three. Add another six and then we get positive three. Let's add a two here and we get we get positive five. So clearly the calculator is keeping track of the negative numbers. It just doesn't display them. And we can also um, we can hit the M minus for a few times and then do the memory recall. It's a negative 25. I can add three to that. We get negative 22. It's just that's it's inexcusable really really crap by the way all these little annoying beeps whenever you push any single button that can be deactivated just by hitting the little music note right here and now it's um, totally silent and of course it's only a, an eight digit calculator so it goes into overflow very very easily and we can bring the sound back just by pushing that again Here's the instruction manual, if you care to have a closer look at it. Before we crack this thing open, let's have a look at the USB functionality. I've got a mouse and a flash drive plugged into it. By the way, according to the manual, this thing is... Whoa, dude! I totally wasn't expecting that. It's got a blue LED backlight in there. Man, that's awesome. I guess it's kind of wanky, but I'm just really surprised because I wasn't expecting it. All right. I was going to say that it's a USB 1.1 according to the manual, not even a USB 2. So really, really piss poor by today's standards. And I'm moving the mouse. The mouse, it's not lit up at all. Hmm. It says USB device not recognized. Malfunction. Let me unplug these things first. Try again. Still not recognized. Let's try the other one I bought. So far so good. Let's plug in the mouse. Hey, the mouse works, all right. 
and we'll put in a flash drive. And that pops up just fine. Let's copy over here some one of my video files. And going over a USB 1 connection, it's really going to take a while here. And I think I'm just going to stop it here. It's going at an average speed of 1 megabyte per second. Really, really poor to transmit this, uh, this video file, which is what? 720 megabytes. All right, let's take out these batteries. It's a couple of AG13 or LR44 or Energizer 357. Very, very common size. At the very least, you can get these. If you spend 575 on this thing, at the very least, you get some batteries out of it. And I was going to say you could also get um, this three foot USB extension cable, which might not be able to handle the USB 2.0 data rate speeds. Maybe it would, maybe it won't. Um, very good for charging, of course, charging your, your uh, cell phone or mobile device, give you a little bit of wiggle room with a little bit extra length. However, I don't know if the camera could show this, but the one pin here all the way on the left is uh, it's a little bit too far deep down inside. And, it, you know, the other three pins are fine, but that one is kind of bent a little bit and it's just really, really piss poor quality. All right. Have not seen this before. And yeah, we got a really cheap fiberglass circuit board in here got to take out a few more screws pry off the LCD and it's just coming all apart here oh yeah it's got these little plastic things that are holding it in all right there we go it's got the LCD little backlight the LED the blue LED backlight this will be nice could probably use that in some some random project at some point in time nice little blue light spread over a rectangular area right here and got a couple of chip on board epoxy coated so of course that one's going to be for the the calculator and timer and all that and all the the functions here on the lcd and of course that one is just going to be for the usb hub completely isolated two completely isolated functions here i mean the usb has no effect at all on the calculator and such and vice versa and i think i found out why the usb wasn't working i'm not 100 percent certain if uh, it was like this when i cracked it open but the white wire one of the data lines here is disconnected so maybe i'll just solder that on and then plug it back into the computer and see if that fixes it all right Solder the wire back on. Let's plug it in. And we hear some good sounds from the computer. Plug in the mouse. And there we go. The mouse works fine. I fixed the USB problem. It was just one of the data lines was not soldered on properly. Let's have a quick look at the cheap soldering job everywhere else on this circuit board. Somewhat typical of what you would expect from a cheap Chinese product like this. Even got a little tiny solder blob right here. I just picked off my fingernail. I haven't seen any date codes on this thing at all. I'm assuming it's going to be about 10 years old. If you think back to 2006, something like this would have just barely been relevant by the technology of the day. Just barely usable back then. Certainly not by today's standards. But it, it might have been a little bit helpful for some particular market back then. I think the intended market for this thing would have been just swag that would have been available at job fairs or or um, conventions of some sort 
where a company would order a whole bunch of these things and have their logo printed right up here in this space. That's probably what this thing was, was made for, is just cheap crap that would be given away, because it really is cheap crap. Now I've got an idea on how I can modify this thing to make it a little more interesting and I'll work on that and show it to you in, in the next shot. And here it is. Since the clock is really the only useful function this thing has, I decided to use it just as a digital clock. And since the LCD does not have any kind of adhered material on the back of it, like a, a silver um, plastic sheet or any other kind of opaque material. It's see-through, transparent. I really like that, so I wanted to take advantage of it. So I hot glued it onto the top of the circuit board after I had cut off a little bit, about a half inch of the circuit board, just cut right through all these USB ports and then hot glued all around the, the LCD to keep that up in place and hot glued the, the battery compartment on here of course and a magnet so you can stick it on the refrigerator. Now of course it wouldn't work too well on a dark colored fridge but my fridge is an off-white ivory color something like that so it'll work just fine and if I had a darker color fridge I can just stick it on a white piece of paper you know that'll just work work just fine too. As for the keypad, I don't really need that. I don't mind just sticking a paper clip or something on these on the uh, the button the button pads here for the rare occasion that I would actually need to set this. Maybe just move it forward or back once in a while for daylight savings time, but that's that's about it. I might also have to adjust the time. That's one possible disadvantage of this is that it has a really dinky little crystal right here 32 kilohertz crystal and you know there's no telling how cheap that thing is so you know it could gain or lose possibly a minute per month is um is a good possibility but it might also keep pretty darn good time and i'm not going to worry about that and also when it comes to setting it i don't really need a paper clip either. I could just push the set button right here and the conductivity of my skin is enough to get it going to, to close that circuit. So I can, yep, just about bring it up there. Okay, yep, all right. So yeah, that works fine. It's a little touchy sometimes, but of course, if I lick my finger, then it works really well. I can move through all these, lick it again. All right, there we go. I'm making a fool out of myself here. I don't know how the heck this happened that I changed it to 2017 and February. Oh, I think I think a problem with using spit on my finger is that it it stays contacted. It stays conducting for a while. Look at that. That's why it's going all crazy. Oh man. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. And just for fun, we can see what this thing would have looked like back on November 11th in 2011. Wait for it. Oh yeah. Six 11s in a row for one fleeting second. Now according to the manual for this thing, the year is actually able to go from 1900 to 2099. That is, there's a calendar in there to match the year and the date with the, the day of the week for a period of 200 years. Absolutely ridiculous for something like this. Anyway, let's go back to December 31st, New Year's Eve, and watch what would have happened had we seen it on here. There we go. 14 digits all changing at the same time and the day of the week as well. Kind of like a 15th digit. And since it still works, I guess that means this is Y2K compatible. Well, that's it for my teardown and review of an electronic gadget that simply should not exist. It's so, so horrendous in many of its functions as we saw, especially that negative sign or lack thereof 
on the calculator function that's really really bad i don't know what i'm going to do with this other one right here maybe i'll just take it apart and get the blue led backlight from it here's the other one that i took out i took off the backing from it the the white reflective backing and the translucent diffuser that was on the front of it and so i got that right here i think it's really nice it'll add a nice touch to some project at some point in time maybe i can make a night light out of it or put the two of them together um, to make a night light and blue led night light to add to the collection of all the other night lights that i have going around the house here so that's it if you learned something please give the video a thumbs up and i will close with playing a sample of each of the eight different musical tunes or alarm tones ringtones that are on this thing <laughs>